Hello and welcome to this episode for Electric Pages. Today we're here at Embedded World 2025 Nuremberg. It's been a fantastic event and I'm joined by my very good friend Walter from Avnet Silica. And Hi. we met last time. Yeah. Fantastic. It's great to see you again. Yeah. So just before we dive into all the stuff that you're going to show us, tell the audience who you are, what you do and what you like to do in your free time. Yeah. So my name is Walter Buhl and I'm responsible for all wireless products in Avnet Silica on EMEA level. So I'm setting up the strategy, talking to the customers, but also to the suppliers. And yeah, what I like to do privately is a little bit of biking and having good food is most important. Excellent. <laughs> so we've got a guy here who's an engineer and has a good work-life balance, which is honestly rare these days. Yeah. Fantastic. So can you tell us what's going on here? Because this whole show, I've seen a lot of wi uh, wireless technologies and I can see mobile technologies going on here. But tell me what's going on. Yeah. So we have two demos at one demo port here. One is a 5G video streaming demo where we have a power over Ethernet camera, a Teltonica router with 5G, a Quactel device with a highly intelligent Snapdragon inside, also providing Wi-Fi, uh, 5G, 5G. And to do two feather eyes, Wi Fi 5G as well is quite confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Wi Fi 5 and yeah, 5G. Yeah, is, uh, not helpful, honestly. So, but uh, this is also 5G. And uh, besides the video stream, which is nothing very special, we also can show an online over the air provider swap on eSIMs. So both devices have eSIMs, and we have uh, eSIMs from IDEMIA. Mm -hmm and our own eSIM platform and we have eSIMs from Thales and on both we can do over the air provider swap and also with the new SGP22 and SGP32 standard we can change providers on the Thales SIM. So, 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 these, so first things first, these are eSIMs, so it's electronic SIM, no physical card and then secondly, you can change the provider over the air. Yeah, this means you don't need to drive out to the device and change a SIM oh, if you impressive. have an installed device. And for example, the tariffs are no longer fitting. Absolutely. Or even in your production, you can pre-configure it. And then if you have some devices in Brazil and you want to use another Different network, yeah. another network or another provider in Brazil, you can over the air change the profile. And I'm also thinking as well that some providers might disappear. So you might have a, a provider who goes bust or you know yep. uh, bankrupt, and then you know you can't get your uh, you can't get your devices to connect anymore. So like you say, because it's an eSIM, you can swap it over in real time, which is yep. absolutely fantastic. You can carry on getting your devices connected. Yeah. But there's a second setup here as well, and this yep. is the one I think you were quite interested in, which yeah, is the yeah, old yeah. one. We so, love the second demo the second... even more. So tell because us what's going it's ultra wideband provided by Quovo, the former Decawave, and, um, or, or Quovo acquired Decawave, yeah. But the ultra-wideband technology is very good and uh, precise and mature now. In these devices, we have some modules with the Quovo chip on, and it's a tag here. And on the ridging, we have mounted the anchors on the corners of the booths. And we have one anchor behind the wall, which is a kind of a reference anchor. And we have the floor plan of the booths here. And when I move now, we can precisely see the device moving. Which is this one right here. Yep. And now I'm at the border of the booth. And it was centimeter level exact where I was standing. Yeah? And this can be used, of course, in a lot of applications in transportation, in logistics, but even hospitals. Yeah, I, I just learned again from a hospital, they have the defibrillators and they needed to buy too many actually. To know where they, they all were, they, of course. Because they don't know where they are and um, they need always to have enough available. So if they would have ultra wideband in it and can find it immediately, then it would help them to reduce the cost because you need also to do the service for all these DEFIs. This is an ongoing cost. Yeah? This is an OPEX. Yeah? And, I, and I can also imagine that in, in, in a hospital environment, something like these could be quite useful in patient tracking. And, you know, so, some, for example, uh, uh, care homes where, where yeah. patients can be 
could, could lose themselves, they're not sure where they are. Yeah. Uh, uh, staff can find them quickly with this kind of technology. You are 100% right. And of course, there are things already implemented in some hospitals with Bluetooth direction finding and so on. But with the ultra wideband, for example, for the defibrillators, you have centimeter level accuracy. And of course, this is much, much better, yeah? yeah. Because then you need to find it. You you cannot look one meter around. You need to exactly know where it is. Yeah. And the same in, in a logistics center where you have a lot of devices. Yeah? yeah. With your forklift, you do not want to search, hey, is it here or there? You need to know you exactly, exactly, exactly which have, box it's in. Is exactly, yeah. yeah? And that's a technology where I'm quite sure that this will be an innovation for the future. And in former times, the technology was not 100% mature. But now more and more, the chips, the antennas, but also the software is getting more mature. Because the key of all this ultra wideband technology is not the chip only. It's the software behind it. Yeah? Because you need to do all the calculation of time difference of flight, wait, wait, time difference of arrival, and so on. It's not, a simple, it's not a simple case of send a pulse, see the pulse, measure it. It's like you have all the different frequencies, you have to bring it all together, know exactly which direction it's coming from, so it's a very complicated problem. And also the angle sometimes, and the angle, well, angle yeah. of direction. Angle of attack, yeah, so yeah, so it's a so really complicated problem. So there's a lot of calculation problem. in the yeah. background depending on the application. Yeah. You have different ways of measurement, yeah, which are fitting the one or the other is fitting better to application mm. one or two, mm. yeah? And that's uh, why it's so important to have the complete ecosystem. Mm. Of course, some customers are also using it for just access control, opening doors, opening cars, ultra wideband is more and more in, in car access, yeah? And that's because you can tell where the person is next to the car. So you can say, if this ultra wideband signal is this close to this vehicle, we know it's him it, and he's actually next to it. Yeah, and you have a higher security level mm -hmm. because with, for example, Bluetooth, you have just a 2.4 gigahertz band. You can, yeah, you can Ooh. do a jamming and so on. And with this, you have the ultra wideband. And, that, and, that, and, and that's and, a difference. And that reminds me of those car, you know when you get a car theft whereby your keys are in the house, but they, they have like a repeater by the door when they're stealing your car, and then they can yeah. open the door from there yeah. with ultra wideband because you know that the signal source is over here and it's not right next to the car. Yeah. I'm not going to open the car. Yeah. And, and even more, the ultra wideband, as the name is saying, is a very wide band. So tracing the right frequency where the signal is in is very, very difficult. So the security level with ultra wideband is much higher. Yeah. So you have a precise signal, you have a very secure signal, very stable against interference because of the ultra wideband. So so many new options and features which are helping us to have innovative products in the future. And if I remember correctly, ultra wideband is also very low energy as well. It's okay. It's not okay. as low, low energy like the Bluetooth, but it's okay. But, but the accuracy that you're getting, it's, it's like performance per watt. Yeah. Even though it might, it might use more energy, the, the, the centimeter level precision is something you just can't get in things like Bluetooth. Exactly. Yeah, 100% yeah. exactly. So for those who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with your eSIM solutions or your uh, ultra wideband tracking solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Yeah, the best they can do is to contact our local offices. And in each region, we have wireless specialists at Silica. So Silica has 16 wireless specialists all over Europe. And these guys know how to set up the right um, setting for the customer or they have the right access to the suppliers like Volvo, Zip, Quacktel, Deltonica, they know these guys. And if everything fails, they have still me. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and I can help it as well. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. It was nice meeting you again. Absolutely. No, hope to see you next time again. 2026. Yeah. 2026.